Hi everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and this is the 2013 Nissan Juke Nismo. Now the Juke is sort of a cross between a hatchback and a sedan with a real focus on that hatchback look. Now we have a slightly higher ride height than a normal car, which gives it that sort of crossover appearance as well. Let's walk around, let's dive under the hood, and let's talk about what Nismo is. Nismo Nismo, it's sort of a potato potato thing. Either way, that stands for Nissan Motorsports, and that's the tuning division of Nissan. So right here we take the regular Juke, we get nine extra horsepower, we get a lot of suspension tweaks, and of course we get some exterior appearance tweaks going on for this model as well. To say that the Juke's design is polarizing is really putting it mildly. I've heard everything from, my God, that is the ugliest car I've ever seen, to I want to have its babies, and everything in between. Everyone seems to have an opinion about the way the Juke looks, not just from this front angle, but also from the side angle, which we'll take a look at in a bit. It sort of has this honey, I blew up my leaf thing going on here with these sort of bug-eyed turn signal lamps here. Main high beams and headlamps are right here as well. Uh, for Juke Nismo duty, we have some LED uh, daytime running lamps going on right here in the bumper, and of course we have this red stripe going across the lower grille. When you take a look at the side profile of the Juke, you can really see what's going on in terms of crossing between a sedan, a hatchback, and a regular crossover vehicle. We have an overall height that's less than a regular crossover utility vehicle, but higher than a sedan. We have a ground clearance down here that's higher than a regular sedan, but again, less than something you'd normally find in the crossover utility segment. Because we're in the Nismo treated Juke, we have these red mirror caps, and of course we have this red line continuing around from the front across under the doors. Speaking of doors, we have an interesting rear door treatment here. We have this vertical handle here in a kind of unusual place for most vehicles. Normally they're located right down there by the door. And of course, because we're in a Nissan, we have a rear spoiler and we have these unique wheels and tires. We get 225 with rubber in the, in the Nismo Juke versus 215 with rubber in the regular Juke. That's a decent improvement when you're talking about a vehicle that's this light. The heavy styling continues around the rear of the Juke. We have these very aggressive, very Nissan tail lamps going on right here. They actually remind me a little bit of Volvo, if I'm honest, especially with the hips that are going on here in the rear of the vehicle. It's a very attractive look, but it does mean that there's a little bit less cargo space going on in the Juke, which we'll take a look at in a bit. We have a third rear stoplight integrated into the spoiler, and we have a decent amount of aero treatments going on in this rear bumper cover. So you can see these little fins right here to help direct air around. We have the red line continuing on from the front of the vehicle here as well. We have a large knee Nissan Nismo single exhaust tip over there on the other side, and of course this square in the middle is just a reflector, it's not actually a third brake light because that's up there in the spoiler. Under the hood of this small crossover, you'll find a very small engine. This is a 1.6 liter direct injection four-cylinder turbocharged engine. In the Nismo Juke, it produces 197 horsepower. It's eight more horsepower than the regular Juke and 184 pound-feet of torque. It's a decent amount of power for an engine this small, and we have to keep in mind that the Juke is a fairly light vehicle as well. That helps us deliver 25 MPG in the city and 31 on the highway in our front-wheel drive manual transmission equipped Juke. If you opt for the CVT in the all-wheel drive, that drops by one mile per gallon on the highway to 2530. Now the Juke does take a little bit of a hit in Nismo trim because the gearing is different than the regular uh, Juke. So we get a slightly better city and highway fuel economy numbers in that regular Juke if you don't opt for this performance pack. We'll take a look under this little cover here so you can see the rest of the engine. So you can see it's a very small, very compact engine. I do like the way that it's laid out, however, because the oil filler here is in a very easy to find location. Uh, you know, the oil dipstick is over here as well. Uh, it seems like it's fairly easy to service, even though it is a fairly compact engine and a fairly compact engine compartment as well. Uh, things are fairly, fairly well spaced out under here for service. As I was saying, the Juke is not a very large vehicle and we have this decidedly sloped rear windshield. That really takes a toll on your cargo carrying capacity versus something like a true hatchback with a very vertical hatch. This is the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight. You can fit it in the car in a number of different ways. You can fit it in this way. It's just about as big as you can fit in the Juke. As you can see, you can open and close the hatch very easily with the bag in this position, but you cannot rotate it like this and have it fit in the car. So you're really gonna be limited to about two of these large roller carry-on bags in the back and maybe some other small baggage as well. And we do have folding rear seat backs and these do, seat backs do fold completely flat with the rear cargo area, allowing you to roll those bags all the way into the cargo area, really enlarging the cargo room but you can't carry any passengers back there, of course. At least they are split 60-40, so that allows you to have two or three people in the car and have some extra cargo room. The Juke has a few cargo carrying tricks up its sleeve, however. First is this cargo lid, which does stay in a nice vertical position like that. The second is we have this large cargo tub right here in the back. 
Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It is quite large. You can fit quite an, a large amount of stuff here. Of course, our jack is also contained in that little tub and we have a spare tire underneath that. So if you need to carry a lot more cargo, you can just remove the tub and of course, remove that cargo lid and you can fit a decent amount more stuff in the back of your juke. It's now time for our exclusive trunk comfort index score. And to find out, we're gonna have uh, my assistant close the door on me and see how we fit in here. Okay, now we can open it back up again. Any day now. In our exclusive trunk comfort index, the Juke score is about a six out of 10 as far as hatchbacks go. This cargo area isn't quite as cramped as it might seem on the surface. Of course, we also have that additional room down below this hatch as well. At $22,990, the Nismo is not the most expensive flavor of Juke you can buy. In fact, it slots kind of in the middle of the rest of the Juke lineup. But that means that the Juke overall isn't a very expensive vehicle, so you shouldn't expect a great deal of creature comforts. We have a decent amount of hard plastics going on in the cabin. We don't have a telescopic steering wheel like you'd find in other vehicles at this price range. It only adjusts for height, although it is infinitely adjustable for height rather than only four or five detents. We also get a manual driver's seat. No power option exists on the Nismo Juke, but the seat is unique to the Nismo model. We have a great deal more bolstering on the bottom cushion and on the back cushion, and it is covered in this lovely Alcantara fabric. We don't have a whole lot of lumbar support going on in this seat, and it's not adjustable either, uh, but fortunately, Nissan's manual is just about the right shape for lumbar support for me. Little trick I learned from church there. Let's take a closer look up front. These are, again, those Nismo-specific seats in the Juke covered in this Alcatara fabric. We get uh, some red polka dots going on here and red stitching on the seat as well. Uh, because we're in the Nissan model, we have the same Alcatara fabric on the doors, nice and soft there. Uh, the same funky juke styling goes on right here, continues across this hard plastic dash uh, to this interesting center console here. We have the optional navigation system in our model. It's almost $1,200. Definitely is worth it because it also comes with the Rockford Fosgate system. We'll go over the infotainment options in a little bit. And if we move down here in the center console, you can see that our model is the six-speed manual equipped version. And this is the interesting drive mode and climate control module. As you can see, those buttons switch functions when you press the different buttons here. We have a single zone automatic climate control and the normal climate functions. If we hit D mode, we have normal sport eco mode. Uh, eco mode can control your climate to uh, sort of try to save you some gas just by turning up the temperature basically is all that it really does. Sport makes the throttle control a great deal more aggressive and firms up the steering. Of course, we have a normal mode there as well. We have drive info button over here, which gives you G-force meter, drive information, etc. Uh, over here we have our economy information, but if we zoom out, you'll notice one thing that's very small and it's very low on the dash. So if you're driving the car and your eyes are up here, that's a great deal out of the way. So that display really isn't terribly useful to me while I'm driving. If we go over here to the instrument cluster, you can see that we have a red tinted Nismo specific tachometer there. We have the same multi information display out of Nissan's small economy vehicles. And of course we have our speedometer over here that goes to 140. The Nismo model has the same airbag cover as the rest of the Juke lineup. It is a three-spoke arrangement. Down here, we have the red contrasting stitching, which goes all the way to this Alcantara side grip. It's sort of a suede-like material. Be careful with that. Alcantara does tend to pill like a wool sweater over time. And up here, you'll find a red center indicator on the steering wheel, so you know which way your steering wheel is pointing is the theory. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm not exactly clear whether it's gimmicky or not, but it is kind of an interesting touch for the Juke. Hopping in the back seat of the Juke, you'll notice a few things. First off, this door is in the way of the shot because the door doesn't open very wide in the Juke, which means getting in and out of the back is a little bit tricky. The door opening gets really narrow towards the bottom as well as you saw on the side profile that also hampers ingress and egress. But the Juke is not a very big car, as is obvious if I sit upright in the back seat. My head is now touching the ceiling, so you really can't sit in a very upright posture if you're maybe about 5'10 or taller. This front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall. I do have a decent amount of leg room left, but again, that headroom is a problem. If I move over here to the passenger side, this front passenger seat is adjusted for someone six foot five in the car. He had a decent amount of headroom up front and my legs are only barely touching the seat, but again, I don't have a whole lot of headroom. If I move over to the middle seat, I have a decent amount less room than I did in those outboard seats. Not just because the Juke is not a terribly wide vehicle, but also because these outboard seats are slightly bucket shaped, which means I'm kind of sitting on a little hump here in the middle. I do have about the same amount of headroom as I did in the outboard seats, and that's just because of the overall profile of the Juke. We have 60-40 folding rear seats in the Juke, but we don't have a center armrest in the rear. 
The Juke is not a terribly expensive vehicle, and some of that cost cutting comes up here in this headliner. If we zoom in, you can see this is the same material that most cars use to line their trunks, so not a terribly exciting fabric. Over here, we have our microphone for the Bluetooth speakerphone. This is one of the best speakerphones in any vehicle at any price, and I'm not kidding on that one. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, BMW vehicles don't have speakerphones that have as good a voice quality as this car. Of course, we have our little map lights going on right here. Let's take a closer look at that optional navigation system. Again, this is just under $1,200, and it does include the Rockford Fosgate up-level audio system. Now, as far as audio system packages go on new cars, this is a reasonable deal because it's not unusual to pay $2,000 or even more dollars for a factory navigation system. In other models of Nissan products, this nav system accounts for about $700, so you would logically assume that the rest was the audio system upgrade. We do have full iPod integration, as you can see, we hit over here to the iPod interface. Uh, we can browse the iPod, playlists, artists, albums, genres, etc. We don't have any voice commands, all of Ford Sync, but the system is fairly snappy, fairly easy to use as well. We have a single slot CD player here, of course. Uh, we have XM satellite radio, we have AM FM radio, and if we hop over here to the nav system, this is where you'd enter your destination, previous destinations, home, etc. Uh, we also have access to the map. We have nav traffic. This is traffic delivered by XM Satellite Radio, so you do need that subscription in order for that to work. And we do have, of course, the setup screen here where you can change your audio options and system options, etc. Even base models of the Juke have an iPod interface, although navigating your iPod is going to be easier on this navigation system. All models of the Juke also come with Bluetooth phone integration, but we don't have Bluetooth streaming audio in this car. So if you have a Bluetooth streaming audio only device, I don't know where you'd find one, but if you had one, you wouldn't be able to use it with this system. We were able to use a wide variety of USB devices as well as uh, that stereo mini input via the AUX cable there. We have Bluetooth phone integration in all models, and that's controlled via the controls in the steering wheel, and those do show up on this display as you see. There's no way to browse your uh, phone book via the system because, you know, it's not integrated in this touchscreen that way. You have to use the voice commands on the steering wheel for that. The six-speed manual transmission was an interesting choice for Nissan because it is a nice close ratio unit. Transmission has a nice notchy feel to it, um, but it's all very low ratio. So the ratios are all very close and they're all kind of low end. So in sixth gear at 70 miles an hour, we're spinning almost 3,100 RPM, which means you get a lot more uh, acceleration feel out on the highway than you might think with an engine that produces only 197 horsepower. It helps make the Juke feel a little bit more sprightly than it otherwise would. Our zero to 60 time clocked in at 7.45 seconds, which is very respectable, but thanks to this transmission and the way the gearing is set up, it feels a lot faster than it really is. That's better than feeling slower than it really is, however, so if I had to choose, I'd choose the car that felt faster. Uh, this car definitely puts a smile on your face, which is one of the endearing qualities about the Juke behind the wheel uh, is that it makes you smile, and not every car does that. There are cars that are fast, like a, a BMW M6 um, or a Jaguar XKRS, that don't necessarily put a smile on your face because they're, they're a little bit too demanding to drive. They take too much concentration, etc. And, and the Juke isn't like that. The Juke is just easy to drive. It's easy to drive quick, especially on winding mountain roads like this, and it's an awful lot of fun. The clutch feel is also excellent in this car. The engagement is very predictable. And for once, the steering isn't as numb as I had expected it to be, especially when you push this little toggle button and put it in sport mode. That really just affects the amount of assist that the uh, car's computer is giving you on that electric power steering, but it does give the steering a good weight to it. In terms of absolute grip, the Nismo is definitely better than the regular Juke, and that's thanks to the suspension modifications, the lowered ride height, as well as those wider and lower profile tires. This thing really grips more than you would think it would on a winding mountain road like this, and that's again thanks to that low curb weight, low center of gravity, and a fairly light engine, which really helps the front of the car from being too nose heavy, like you would think a front wheel drive car would be. I should temper that by saying that I don't particularly believe that torque steer is the devil's magic. I find it quite entertaining in certain vehicles, as long as it's not overpowering and doesn't you know, define the car's handling characteristics. And the Juke definitely has torque steer at certain speeds and at certain throttle levels, but overall it's very controllable and it's quite manageable in terms of front wheel drive vehicles that have a decent amount of power. I think it gives the Juke a little bit more character than you'd otherwise find. And of course, since there's so many front wheel drive cars out on the market now, it's really not very unusual. Not everything is rosy behind the wheel, however. You can see that we have a fairly large blind spot back there with that rear C pillar. And of course, this B pillar on my left is also fairly large and it gives me a decently sized blind spot on the driver's side as well. 
Our Facebook followers were asking us how cabin noise was in the Duke, and it's not too bad. You know, we don't have too much road noise, honestly, in the cabin. Uh, we have a little bit of wind noise, as you'd expect from a car in the $20,000 price range or so. And of course, we have a decent amount of engine noise. Thankfully, this 1.6 liter turbo engine has a fairly good sound to it, especially in the Nismo model where we have that you know, sport tuned exhaust back there. Uh, and it's tuned fairly well in terms of uh, you know, most normal adult preferences, I should say. Uh, I don't care for terribly loud exhaust, so something like the Fiat Abarth uh, just annoys me more than it excites me. And this is a decent amount quieter than that. It has a fairly refined sound and you don't hear too much of the turbo under the hood. Because of this engine's small displacement, you do have to try and keep it in its target power band between 2500 and 5000 RPM or so to get much power out of it, and there is a little bit of turbo lag, of course. But the benefit to that is the fuel economy. Even though it's been rated 2530 by the EPA, we've been averaging nearly 28 miles per gallon in our mixed driving, and I do live up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass, and I drive on roads like this road that we're on right now every single day, and that normally drops most cars to slightly below the EPA combined rating, and this car is notably above that. If you add the CVT and all-wheel drive, Nissan claims that you'll lose one mile per gallon on the highway and have a similar uh, combined miles per gallon score. But in our tests, the CVT models in general tend to score slightly better than the manual transmission models. Again, that really depends on the driver and the driving situation, but Nissan's CVT has a larger gear ratio range than this six-speed manual transmission. So it has a roughly similar first gear, but it has a much taller final gear, which does help with real-world fuel economy for most drivers. The Nismo version of the Juke starts at 22,990 for the six-speed manual and front-wheel drive model to 25,290 for the CVT-equipped all-wheel drive model. Now, if you get the CVT-equipped all-wheel drive model, you also get the torque vectoring system, which sends power front to rear, left to right, of course, for better handling and better performance. We've been told by Nissan that not only is the all-wheel drive version slightly faster, even though it has the CVT, of course that's thanks to the CVT really, and the added weight of the all-wheel drive system, but it also handles around a track better. And that's been borne out by a number of other publications and track days where they were able to compare the front-wheel drive to the all-wheel drive model. You do only lose one mile per gallon in that CVT equipped model. And of course, if you live in mountainous areas like I do, then the CVT equipped model makes an awful lot of sense because it helps you climb those hills a lot more easily and you get decent fuel economy in that process. If I were to buy a Nismo Juke, even though I like the six-speed manual transmission, I would probably get the CVT just for that all-wheel drive option. I'm a little bit sad that Nissan didn't choose to bundle all-wheel drive with the six-speed manual because this manual transmission is a great transmission, it has a great feel, and I really like driving this car overall. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and thanks for joining us for our quick look at the 2013 Nissan Juke Nismo. If you have any additional questions on the vehicle, be sure and throw those in the comments section down below. Go ahead and click on that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen. And of course, tell us what you liked, what you didn't like about the review, and what you'd like us to review next. Go ahead and like us on Facebook, uh, like this video, comment on the video, tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see next. And of course, always tell us how we can improve our videos because we're here for you. That sounds really cheesy. We're really here. We're here for you, man. We're here for you.